Do you dream of landing a job at Accenture? Want to stand out from the crowd and make a lasting impression in your interview? Hello everyone and welcome to SASGuru, your go to source for all things Salesforce. This video is your ultimate guide to acing your Accenture interview. We'll unlock the secrets to technical mastery, cultural fit, and confident communication. Here's a snapshot of what you'll gain from this video. Master the Salesforce basics. Get crystal clear explanations of key concepts with detailed questions and answer sessions. Conquer real world situations. We've got a curated list of scenario based questions to help you shine. Go beyond the resume. Learn how to research Accenture like a pro and showcase your cultural fit. Ready to turn your interview opportunity into a career breakthrough. Let's dive in. In this segment, we'll tackle technical coding-based questions and answers. Question one, explain the MVC architecture in Salesforce. In Salesforce, the MVC model, view controller, architecture is a prevalent design pattern. The model element manages the data and underlying business logic, utilizing Salesforce's database and objects. The view aspect is the interface seen by users, formed through lightning components or visual force pages. The controller part is responsible for processing user inputs and interactions, facilitated by Apex triggers and classes. This division of responsibilities boosts both the system's modular nature and its ease of upkeep. Question two, describe the difference between trigger and workflow in Salesforce. Salesforce utilizes both triggers and workflows for automation, though they have distinct functions. Triggers are segments of Apex code that execute around data operations, ideal for intricate business logic beyond the scope of declarative methods. Workflows automate certain actions like email sending or field updates, triggered by specific criteria and achieved without the need for programming. Question three, how do you handle bulk data operations in Salesforce? To handle large scale data operations in Salesforce, the Balding API or Batch Apex is employed. The Balding API facilitates the asynchronous loading or deletion of substantial data volumes, optimizing API utilization and time efficiency. Batch Apex processes extensive data by dividing it into smaller segments effectively managing database operations and adhering to Salesforce's governor limits. Question four, what is SOQ, L, and SOSL? How are they different? Salesforce leverages SOQL, Salesforce Object Query Language, and SOSL, Salesforce Object Search Language, for data retrieval. SOQL focuses on specific objects, querying records from either a single or multiple related objects under defined conditions. In contrast, SOSL is adept at performing global searches across multiple objects simultaneously. Question five, can you explain the concept of governor limits in Salesforce? Salesforce imposes governor limits to maintain efficient and equitable resource usage within its multi-tenant environment. These limits encompass the maximum allowable number of SOQL queries, DML operations, CPU usage, and memory usage per transaction. Mastery of these limits is essential for creating scalable and high-performance applications on the Salesforce platform. Question six. Explain how you would use Apex classes and interfaces. Apex classes in Salesforce are used to write custom business logic. They are similar to classes in Java and can contain variables, methods, and other class-specific elements. Interfaces in Apex define a contract for classes, specifying methods that implementing classes must use. They are essential for creating modular and flexible code allowing different classes to use the same interface, but with different implementations. Question seven, describe the role of Visual Force in Salesforce development. 
Visual Force, a framework within Salesforce, empowers developers to craft tailored user interfaces. It uses a tag-based markup language akin to HTML, offering robust options to link data and functionalities to Salesforce's database. By integrating with Apex code, Visual Force pages become dynamic and data-centric, crucial for personalizing the user experience on Salesforce. Question 8. What is Salesforce Lightning and how is it different from Classic? Salesforce Lightning is the modern UI of Salesforce offering a more intuitive and responsive user experience compared to Salesforce Classic. It includes the Lightning Design System, Lightning App Builder, and Lightning Component Framework, allowing for easier customization and development of responsive applications. Lightning is designed to work across devices and provides better performance and enhanced features compared to Classic. Question 9. How do you ensure code quality and maintainability in Salesforce development? To ensure code quality and maintainability in Salesforce, developers should follow best practices such as writing clear and concise code, adhering to naming conventions, commenting code where necessary, and using version control systems. Additionally, implementing code reviews Unit testing with high coverage and adhering to Salesforce governor limits are crucial practices. Leveraging tools like Salesforce DX can further enhance code quality and collaboration. Question 10. Discuss how you would implement security in a Salesforce application. Implementing security in a Salesforce application involves using various Salesforce security features to protect data and ensure that users have appropriate access levels. This includes configuring object and field level permissions, using profiles and permission sets, and implementing sharing rules and roles. Developers should also use Apex managed sharing for programmatic record sharing and ensure that their custom code adheres to security best practices, like avoiding SOQL injection, 